We want to give a big shout out to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring this video. I just visited their global headquarters in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and wow, this leading medical manufacturer has state-of-the-art workplaces, provides top pay, and even has a housing stipend for their interns. Learn more about how Stryker supports their employees who are in first by going to careers.stryker.com forward slash first. Commas High School in Washougal High School in Hawkinson High School. It's Mean Machine. So they were semifinalists at the Clackamas District with an overall record of 13 and 5 and deserving winners of the Excellence in Engineering Award. So we got like a whole rundown of everything that had happened with them at this event, but so this was one of those events where I didn't necessarily watch, but going back and rewatching their their match videos, I was absolutely blown away. Um, so they had a s series of drive team and pit crew mistakes later on in the district that would end up kind of ending their really good run that they had. Um, aside from that, they were one of the most like consistent and just like maneuverable shooters at that event. Um, so they went into detail. They kind of sent Tyler a rundown of what had happened, but they said that after quarterfinals, they changed out their auto to shoot earlier so they wouldn't run into their alliance partners 1540. Um, in semis one, the driver said the robot wasn't controllable, so they suspected the code change uh, was the problem, so they reverted it, but we were also suspicious of the gyro, so we replaced it before semis match two, which is a really crazy thing to do. I can't imagine that was at all enjoyable. Um, in that match, the robot was even worse to drive, unfortunately. So um, they said, we got the robot back and found that one of the swerves was not zeroing itself correctly when enabled. And we contemplated swapping it, but we're running low on time. So put it in its mechanical home position um, to start the match. That way it wouldn't have a zero, have to zero itself. Um, we put the robot on the field for match three with little confidence that the issue was resolved and then the robot wouldn't connect to the field. The FTA had us restart driver station software and we connected. Um, they said, I think this was the original problem. The drive team said they forgot. So um, I think they had a really rough end to that event, but I think that they're definitely going to come out really, really strong again I in agree. week four at the Sundome District event. Like I'm, I'm sure that they will definitely make it to the finals and i really hope that they bring home a banner because i was totally blown away by their robot and i can't even imagine how difficult it was navigating that situation especially like in the playoffs it's like super duper high stress so i think they had a really good run i'm excited to see them week four um and obviously later on i would assume at the pnw district championship and then hopefully houston For sure, Justin. Do you, you know, do you see what's going on in the chat right now? I it, it, I literally was lost in the chat. <laughs> I know. It's it's like, like, <laughs> Natalie and Zach in the top twenty-five chat. Yeah. Is it? How long have we been? What year is? So this yeah, is the, that's a that's a throwback for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's great to see uh, me machine here at uh, number fifteen. And yeah, just some like we had kind of mentioned with three forty like earlier. You know, things that just didn't have any of those like little gremlins and stuff that kill you. Um, you know, this, this unfortunately happened, and it sounds like, to, to me, Machine here, and just to well, only get better going forward. So uh, congratulations to them here. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. All right, and moving on to our number 14 spot at a PNW as well. Justin, can you tell us about 4911? From Seattle, Washington, Kings High School is the Cyber Knight, 17-1 and one overall, and with the winners of the Glacier Peak District event. Mm -hmm. So this is my first team. Uh, of the season from the Pacific Northwest District and 4911 is one of the best teams in that region this season. It's the first week. How can you tell? You can just watch the robot and know. Their multiple auto has, is greatly aided by their incredible swerve drive that was ready to go match one. You know, I, I was like, all right, 4911, get to some research. Watch the first match and they're like, boom, like six, six or seven ball autonomous, like mm -hmm. right out of the gate, first match, super impressive. Uh, I think they, I, I don't know what their relationship is, if any, with Jack and the Bob, but they were like, they, they were very similar robots. Like the swerve was so fast. I was so I don't get jealous of swerve that often, but I was like, damn, like that's nice. Uh, it was I was just really awesome watching. Why you know, bring going back to the zebra motion thing? Um, watching the, the 1411 matches with Jack and the Bot at the same time, like the little lines are just like zzz, zzz, going all over the place. They're crazy fast, um, but they. Uh, the, the driver is obviously very skilled. Um, they're super fast picking up balls and scoring balls. They have two arm, arm and climbs with, or two climbs to, ugh, two arms to climb with. Um, but I actually saw one match where they only got one on and it still climbed. So uh, I think it's a really special robot for for 911. Uh, it was a blast to watch this weekend for sure. And if you missed it, you can catch them again this week 
back to back for them this week uh, at West Valley, where they will look for their second blue banner of the season. I love that nice forty nine eleven yeah. has not only become famous because of a, essentially a meme, but they're also making kick ass robots as well. So if, if you want to yeah. formula how to get on the top twenty five, there it is, right there. So <laughs> build a robot that's consistently good, and then also you know uh, you know you can make a meme about yourself that gain, gains you more uh, attention as well too. So somebody's asking before that's there's a there's a formula for success. Right there, you need both of them. There you go. <laughs> you need you need both. <laughs> I, I, overall, it's it, it is true. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on. Uh, this is going to be a, a good one. Uh, and the thirteenth <laughs> spot is team number thirty three. Oh boy! From Auburn Hills, Michigan, and Notre Dame Preparatory School, it's the Killer Bees. An overall record of twelve and five, and they were the semifinals at the Southfield District event in. Fim, coming off three district wins and a district championship win as well in 2019, the Bees look to continue the success this past weekend at Southfield. Uh, finishing fourth with a 1.66 rankings for average, they would captain in the number three alliance and will go down in the semifinals in three matches to the number two alliance. They are a small bot with a unique design, and we have gotten um, some info from them that they predict they were really only operating at 30%. Uh, with a list of about 70 items that they want to work on and improve on uh, for the next event, which is uh, Bell, Belleville, which is next weekend. So good luck to them. Tyler, <laughs> let's hear about I, it. I'm just, I, I'm sorry. I mean, this is, a, you know, uh, overall, if you look at the top 25 this week, it's been pretty close with the yellows. And actually, I mean, them being at 35 isn't too bad. But, uh, yeah, they should not be in the top 25 this week. I'm sorry. Uh, 33 is a, is a team near and dear to me. Uh, but their performance was definitely not great. Will they be on the top 25 in the future? Yeah. Uh, if you looked at how they ranked just in Michigan, I think the viewers voted them as a 6 in the Michigan teams, and the hosts had them at 10. So uh, a lot of a lot of votes coming in from outside of FIM that really propped them up. Uh, is, are they a bad bot? No, I think they. You know, when you're when you're that good, expectations are yes. really really high, and exactly. uh, I think people tend to rag on them a lot more because of it. Uh, but on the same note, should they be in the top twenty five this week? No, I don't think they should. Uh, I, I think we'll see them in their future weeks, and I can't wait to see their improvements as well too. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guess that. All right, so moving on to our 12th ranked team. Justin's going to talk about team at 2096. From Demona, Israel, in Zinman High School, it's RoboActive, 16 1 and 1 overall, and were the winners of the ISR event number one. 29. 2096 lost their first match of the year and then went on a 17 match unbeaten streak uh, mm -hmm. after that, taking the number one seat at the event. They're another team with mm -hmm. a high velocity shot that did lead to some bounce outs, uh, but overall it was extremely, extremely accurate. 2960 likes shooting from the fender, especially, uh, but made me need to expand that strategy as weeks progress. Their climb is a single arm that deploys a hook um, that winches them up pretty quick from the robot center of gravity. So uh, another great robot out of Israel. Uh, this is the third of mine on the list so far. Um, and you can watch them compete again week three at the ISR event number three. So, yeah. you know, we you know Israel gets a lot of participation and good on them because, you know, we encourage people to vote. Um, but there are some really, really good. Uh, it was nice that Israel kind of started earlier in the week. Um, so like they kind of got the spotlight to themselves, and it really did yeah. showcase some awesome robots yeah. uh, from Israel because there are some really good ones. There's a lot of votes coming in from outside of Israel as well, too, which yeah. is honestly pretty uncharacteristic a lot of times in years. And I agree with you, Justin, that having uh, uh, four days to themselves to show off these events yeah. really helped uh, and get a lot of eyeballs on them uh, as well, too. Once yeah. again, it's all about positioning, right? People see it. They're more likely to vote for you. So that's just how, you know, how any, right. vote, how any vote is, right? Any vote you look at is like that. Uh, yeah, but, sure. yeah, really, really liking, uh, once again, this uh, number one alliance uh, on Reddit, ISR1. Yeah, Justin, I, I mean, this we used to only really talk about, what, like, Orbit and Bumblebee maybe out of Israel. Yeah. And now just, like, and all these teams, and rightfully so, are getting the attention that deserve. Yeah. yeah, oh, and Miss Car, yeah. Um, and it, it, I don't know if Ro this is RoboActive's first time in the Top 25, but they're not on often. So this is what we say about Top 25. It's just great to be exposed to so many new teams. For sure. Bing, bing, bing. All right, <laughs> moving along. And the 11th spot is Team 5172. Coming out of Greensville, Minnesota, and Greenbush Middle River School with an overall record of 10 and 5, and I just scrolled way too far. Um, they were finalists at the Great Northern Regional and winners of the Industrial Design Award. It's the Gators. I feel like I 
hadn't heard about them in a while, and then I realized that I don't think I go to the same champs as them anymore. But I just remember, like, as soon yeah, as I saw this team number, Detroit. oh, they are. Yep. I live under a rock, but I just remember their 2016 <laughs> robot like popping into my head, and I was just like, ah, so good. So um, they had a pretty good run at their first event. Uh, they are a low robot, which I was excited to see with a turreted shooter. Um, they came into week one with some really, really good driving and a fast shooter, a uh, really solid climb, and a quick, quick intake, which I think is is really clutch in this game. Um, by the end of qualification matches, they had definitely hit their stride with navigating the field and timing their shots right. Because, um, I mean, as we all know, timing your shots, especially with like a really finicky shooter, can be really important and make or break how many balls you actually get in. So by the time that they were done with qualification matches, they definitely hit their stride and they were really sinking shots. But as the finals rolled in, their accuracy seemed to diminish. Uh, their next event is going to be the 10 lakes or 10,000 lakes regional in week five. So there's no doubt that they'll definitely pick up a lot more momentum and gain a lot more accuracy before their next event to punch their tickets to champs with a win. So Tyler, what do you have to say about this team? I know you were yeah. watching. There, there's event. no doubt they're going to roll through that 10,000 lakes event, by the way. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, all seriousness, the Gators uh, had a little bit of difficulties uh, in the beginning and then they hit their stride. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too late for them in regards to, uh, ranking uh, high up. And if you watch the alliance selection, um, the number one seed uh, tried to pick 16, 19. Uh, then they tried to pick, I think, the seventh seed and then the fourth seed off the top of my head, uh, all which declined. So they had the Scorch first, um, which made a lot of sense. And then they picked up the Gators after that. Um, and actually, the number one seed, I, uh, I didn't watch them too much in quals. They were better than I thought that they would be. They weren't great, but they were they are definitely pretty good. And uh, if you looked at the power between uh, who they played against 876 and 1619 in the finals, just not enough to overcome uh, what that was. But still, you know, from a robot itself, 5172, I, I think they're, I mean, they're, they're fantastic. They've had great years, year in and year out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know about them, they are from a city of like 500 people in the middle of nowhere, Minnesota. Uh, they had a really cool documentary video uh, made about them, too, called uh, Small Town Robot. And uh, so um, I don't know where you can pick that up right now. Um, I think it's available somewhere out there. But, I mean, last year they had two blue banners uh, at both the regionals. In 2018, uh, they won the Great Northern Regional as well. So this is a team that continues to, to roll. And, uh, you know, you're talking from Minnesota. Uh, I, this is the best Minnesota team out there. I know there's some other great ones like Nightcrawler uh, and CIS and a, and a few other teams out there. Uh, but 5172 is the king of Minnesota, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think they've showed that over time, like in being able to kind of go and check out their matches because of top 25 this year, like Mike and Justin had said, it's a team that's not on my radar because I typically would never see them at an event. So I can't wait to see them come out at their next event. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot more practice mm. that they have under their belt, but like really solid week one showing, in my opinion. So good luck to them at their next event. Hashtag mm -hmm. solid. Yes. Hashtag husky. <laughs> husky. So while we move into our next spot, we're going to uh, give a big thank you to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring uh, this show. Uh, Stryker, guys, uh, awesome company that has stepped up, and really they've stepped up for a big reason. They have people who are in first, who work at Stryker right now, who have awesome jobs, who get paid a butt ton of money, and who actually get to keep doing first freely. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you can't just skip work every day to do first, but uh, if you know some of the people that, that work for Stryker that do first, they really do support you in doing that. So if you're looking for a fantastic career uh, that supports you being in first, uh, internships, they'll cover your housing, they pay really well for it, careers, no matter where you are, intro career, later on, they have careers all around the world, headquartered in Kalamazoo, Michigan, but all around the world you can get things. Uh, go check out their Strikers Careers blog, or you can find out uh, more about how they support FIRST at careers.stryker.com forward slash FIRST. And thanks a lot to Striker uh, for keeping fun, loud, live, independent, because they're super cool with us doing what we do. And that's mm -hmm. a big thing when we bring on sponsors is that we want sponsors that are going to, uh, we know are going to benefit the FIRST community, but then are also going to let us keep doing what we do and not say, thou shall say this and thou shall do it this way. <laughs> um, so that's that's why we really do like Striker because they're like, you know what, you guys do what you do. Uh, we, we just love, uh, we love FIRST and we love what you guys do for FIRST. So so big thanks to Striker uh, for all their support uh, here, especially on the FRC Top 25. All right, and in the number 10 spot, we're hitting the 10. 
Mike, why don't you tell us about Team 2337? From Grand Blank, Michigan and Grand Blank High School, it's the Engineers. They have an overall record of 18-0 and undefeated, and they were the winners of the Kettering number one event. So coming off a, dis- coming off a two-year district win streak, the Engineers made it three years uh, by taking the win this past weekend. They would finish first with a 2.5 ranking score average, and they would select 27 and 83-68 um, to their alliance. Topping out at 183 points in finals match number two, they would take uh, the win there. They have Swerve Drive. They're a tall bot. Um, they could take uh, Power Cells. I don't know if you saw the beginning of that match. They take Power Cells from both of their partners mm-hmm. um, and score in, in the inner port during the autonomous. So awesome robot. Really love it a lot. Um, love watching uh, their, their matches here. Uh, can't wait just to see how they progress uh, later this season. So um, as we kind of mentioned earlier, um, Engineers are kind of one of our, um, our OG teams from way back in the day in the FRC Top 25. Uh, with Zach or who's a, who was or who is in the chat still. Uh, so congratulations to them. I know they've um, we kind of talked about them a lot um, in years past, and then we hadn't heard much from them. Um, and now these past couple of years, we've been talking about them a lot more again. So uh, great to see them back here in the top 25 and not too shabby here at number 10. Um, if you watch Infimidation, uh, there was a very interesting point made by uh, Mike Schreiber uh, in that the questioning, you know, the engineer is looking good early, but questioning long-term viability of them, their full court shot, if you see it, is only about uh, 40% accurate uh, for what they have. So relying then on their alliance partners to essentially clean up after them. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they change up their strategies or keep it the same. Obviously, uh, with a taller robot, you have to uh, go through the round of view point in order to get in good position. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how their strategy changes over time. I think the engineers have, have a great shot at still doing Awesome. If you do this well early, there's no reason you can't uh, keep iterating and improving, in my opinion. Yeah, and I totally, I totally saw it when I was doing research, and I forgot to write it down. But they came away with the double gold cling bling this weekend. So uh, we we'll get those uh, those bling emotes bling. in the chat. For them. Yeah. Um, thanks, Zach, for mentioning that. Appreciate that. All right. So moving on um, to our ninth ranked team. We're gonna hear from Justin about team 188. From Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Woolborn Collegiate Institute, it's Blizzard, the force from the north, 17-1 and overall, and we're, we're the winners of the Durham College event. So 188 is my first Canadian team of the season. That's not true. I talked about 2200 MM Robotics. Sorry, second Canadian mm-hmm. event of the season. Yeah. What does 188 have a special bot uh, this season? A great cycler moving quickly from the initiation line back to the human loading station to keep those power cells flowing, making it difficult for opponents to create that ever-important feedback loop on their side of the field. Their shooter is one of the fastest I saw all week, easily emptying their robot of five balls in a second or less. Uh, it's really something to see if you haven't got a, uh, haven't had a chance to see it yet. Uh, once on the bar, the 188 climb is fast and seemingly very reliable. They were able to take the number one spot at their event and then went on to take the win. So you can catch the Blizzard again in week four at the York University event. So, yeah, 188, um, they're, they're uh, you know, fuselage, whatever you want to call it. Their they're five balls is like, brrr, it's kind of oh, what I we were. That, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of what we were hoping for. Uh, we're not—I don't think we're quite that fast, but it was—it uh, was impressive to see. And but, you know, getting the balls through is is not the hard part. Get them through fast and keeping them accurate mm-hmm. is the hard part. And 188 uh, really uh, does a great job with that. I'm really excited to see the robot up close at some point this season. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, not saying anything. You know, the the faster you get them out, the faster you can do cycles. So, That's um, right. yeah, just really, really, just you know, just seeing them here on, the, on this video, just. Um, you blink and they're gone. Now, you know, the, the downside of that is if you're not accurate, if something happens, you get bumped, then you lose all five. But uh, yeah. this is a slower one. But if you got the shot and it's a clean shot, then um, that's that's great. Great to see Blizzard up here, too. Yeah, absolutely. All right, moving on to the eighth spot. We've got Team 35-38. From Auburn Hills, Michigan, and Avondale High School, it's the Robo Jackets. An overall record of 16-2, and two, and they were the winners of the Southfield District event. So coming out strong in 2020, 35-38 would finish second after going 10-2 and two in qualification matches. If you look at their matches, the Blue Alliance, they were like, looks like pretty consistently over double their score was over double of their, point, of their, of their opponents. Um, they have a low bot, but their intake and climber drops down. I'm um, kind of from, uh, what team was that? 67 from way back in the day. They had one like that, uh, 2012. Um, but their, their intake and their climber kind of dropped down from over the top to the floor. Um, and then I just really like this robot a lot and, and just their integration of it. Um, just awesome work to take home the win there. And they have their sights set um, on their next event, Gull Lake. Uh, before some cross district play, so they will also be at Waterloo. Um, 
and then back for um, Alpina. So four events, not including Michigan uh, State Championship. So um, <laughs> at least five events for them. And uh, Christine's like, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, good luck to them and congratulations. <laughs> Christine, how many are you guys doing this year? I don't know. Um, <laughs> 12, four, is it? 12. Four as of right now and then. As of right now. <laughs> Five, six, maybe. Oh boy, that, that's four. You're doing four events, not including DCMP. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's right. Jesus. Yep. It's like oh, must be nice when it's only five hundred or thousand dollars to register for yeah, events, right. huh? Exactly. Mm, yeah, we lucked out. We actually got into a third event. Nice. In district, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. So that was our eighth ranked team, thirty-five, thirty-eight. Our seventh ranked team is going to be forty-four, fourteen. <laughs> Yeah, at Aventura, California, the Lawrence Thomas Memorial Fund. It's high tide, which I am so excited that I got to sign this team because they're one of my new favorite California teams. So they were quarter finalists and went out with a 10 and 3 overall record and won the Industrial Design Award at the LA North Regional. So LA North was obviously one of the most like anticipated and watched events because Citrus was there, 4481 was there. There were a lot of really good teams there. I would say the top four shooters in the world were pretty much there, and 4414 was one of them. Uh, they're a tall robot that shoots fast and accurate, accurately, and match 61 that they had with 1678, they were just draining shots. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Grumpy dogs. Um, they were just draining shots. Like, it wasn't just 1678. They were coming in, cleaning up, and holding their own as well. Um, and they actually went over and took over the Wheel of Fortune, color wheel, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then... You know, they, they totally own that match. I was really excited to see it. Um, obviously, with 973 and 1678 being at the same event, uh, that match 61 was not going to happen later on in the playoffs. So, um, in that match, too, with uh, 1678, 696 was, like, doing some crazy search delay stuff on the end game where they, like, nearly fell off, and it looked like from the webcast that they were going to slam into Citrus or High Tide, but they didn't. Um so they are competing again soon. So even though they were quarter finalists at this event and they had a really solid showing, I really do anticipate that they're going to do really well um, at their home event in Ventura week four. Crossing my fingers for them, hoping they take home a blue banner or a wild card to get to Houston because they definitely deserve it. This is where uh, the whole discussion on climbs being worked too much kind of comes into play because if you look at this match, right now with a minute left, 44-14 is up 103-18 to 18, uh, in their first uh or I'm sorry, this is a qualification match. Never mind, my bad. In their quarterfinals, though, they were up. They were up the pretty much the whole time as well, too. Uh, and then a failed climb is what costs them in their first quarterfinal. Second quarterfinal, a little bit more issues with that. Uh, do I think 44-14 should be seven? Maybe a little bit lower, but definitely on the top 25. You watch the robot play. They just had some unfortunate circumstances in the quarterfinals. Uh, this robot is pretty spectacular in the way they shoot is great. I would probably have them down maybe closer to uh, 15 to 20 personally. Uh, maybe, eh, maybe, maybe like that's just. 13 to 17 uh but this this robot i think it's one of those be like what they're a quarter finalist my team won and they're not even on the top 25 well i'm going to be straight with you if this robot went up against your team they'd probably kick your butt so uh, <laughs> so i mean that that's i just hear the haters you know and that's that's the way way it goes I mean, if you watch this team, yeah, LA North got a lot of attention to it, obviously, but 44-14 is an absolutely phenomenal team, and I, and I just love the way this robot is structured and can't wait to see more great things from them uh, in their future events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. All right, and moving on, Justin, why don't you tell us about who we have in the number six spot? It is 29-10. From Mill Creek, Washington, Henry Jackson High School, it's Jack and the Bot, 17-1 overall, and we're the winners of the Glacier Peak District event. Jack and the Bot, one of my favorite robots from last season. This year's robot is looking to be even better. If 16 mastered the swerve drive, it's 29-10 that's perfected it and taken it to the next level. They're insanely fast, which gives them numerous advantages in this mm -hmm. game, as you might imagine. Their multiple auto gives their alliance a nice cushion uh, coming out, and then a yeah. teleop. They aren't the most accurate shooter yet, but they overcome that by just mm -hmm. getting more shots on goal yeah. than anyone else. They just cycle so Yeah, when you cycle so many fast. times, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, so watching 4911 and 2910 move around the field uh, was awesome in Elims. The fact that those guys were playing together at Glacier Peak was fantastic. And you can watch them again zoom around together this week at West Valley where 2910 will be competing again. So, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a Jack and Bot fanboy, which yeah, isn't, oh my a, God, isn't, a, isn't a, a stretch. But, man, the, the little robot last year um, was awesome. But, and this one is just as good. And 
I'm excited to see them get even better. Well, and I think the thing is with versus last year where they weren't able to score on, you know, the level three of the rocket. Uh, I yeah. don't really have to worry about that this year. They're scoring on uh, essentially what is level three hab or not, not hab, but port, uh, pretty, pretty well, especially in the, uh, yeah. in the outer port and then some of the inner port as well too. Uh, so I, I think, this could be a great vindication year for 2910 who went out in the quarters, uh, both at IRI and at championships. And, uh, I think this is, this really could be 2910's year, uh, where yeah. you know, building a lower robot has a huge strategic advantage. Don't get me wrong. I still like the idea of, of the higher robots as well too, but man, if 2910 gets their accuracy down, I mean, I, with how good their driving is, I, man, I, I, I can't see many stopping them if anybody. Yeah. I, um, I was really a fan of the robot, the robot last year, and I, you know, I didn't mean to take a shot at 16 necessarily. Everyone knows I, I love, I love 16, I love the bomb squad. But I went back um, and watched some of the reveal videos from 16 back in the day. Their swerve drive was good, but 2910 swerve drive is legit. Like it's a, it's an order of magnitude better and mm-hmm. faster. It's just, it's awesome the progression that, um, that they've been able to build and iterate into their swerve modules and their programming, uh, and it's just, it's a, uh, it's a great bar for for teams to reach for. Definitely. Yeah. It's just, it's amazing. It's just so cool watching them uh, just go around the field like that and how quickly they can cycle. So thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.